alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome again for today's experiment, centrifugal pump. For uh, in today's experiment, we'll study the uh, pump characteristic curves of centrif centrifugal pump, and we'll study the setting of the pump as standalone, and when two pumps are connected to each other in parallel and in series. So uh, let's start with some uh, basic principles about the pump. So pump is a tool that converts the kinetic velocity of a fluid into head or into pressure. So fluid enters the eye of the pump and then we have a rotating impeller. This rotating impeller convert, take uh, or uh, put some kinetic speed into fluid. And then when the fluid exits from the impeller, then there's a volute and this volute is a static. So fluid lose all its energy, kinetic energy, and all this energy is converted to head. So let's apply this and by using Pernod equation. As you know Pernod equation, P1, if we have any two points, for example, you can take point in the impeller and point two when the fluid exits the impeller in the static part of the volute. So we can say P1 over rho g plus v1 squared over 2g plus z1 minus hl equal p2 over rho g plus v squared 2 over 2g plus z2. So the first part is, first term is for the uh, fluid in the impeller and the second part is the fluid when it uh, exit and the volute when it exit. So this is the uh, kinetic velocity, kinetic head, and this is the static, and this is the head loss due to fraction. So now, if we arrange the equation, we can say P2 minus P1 over rho g equal V2 minus uh, V2 V1 squared minus V2 squared over 2g plus Z2 Z1 minus Z2 plus HL. So now, fluid here has some velocity from the impeller, and when it exits, it will become zero. So we have speed for V1, but V2 is zero. So we'll cancel this one. Also, both points on the same level, so Z2 minus Z1, zero. So we'll cancel this one. So now, the equation become v, P2 minus P1 over rho g equal V1 squared over 2g minus HL. So this part is the head acquired by the pump and it's called pump head. V1 squared is the linear uh, velocity of the fluid in the impeller and HL is the head loss due to the friction. So since the velocity is angular velocity, it's not linear velocity because this impeller is rotating. So, and as you know, the linear velocity equal omega, angular velocity, times radius of the rotating speed. So we can rewrite the equation, HP equal omega squared R squared over 2G minus HL. So now, this is my new equation. As you know, or as you notice there, if we plot the bump head against Q, and Q is the uh, fluid quantity or flow rate of water, so the actual pump, the actual curve like this, is come like this. Okay, so it's decreasing after some time. But from uh, here, from the equation, there is no relation, direct relation between HB and Q. So only it depends on the rotating speed and depends on the radius. So as the uh, rotating angular speed or rotating speed increase, we expect more pressure, head pressure, and as the radius, uh, radius of the emperor increase, we are expecting also more pressure. But, so the ideal or the expected line should be like this. But why we get a curve like this, decreasing? Because we had some head loss. As you know, 
head loss equal kf the uh, loss coefficient times v squared over 2g so and uh, as you know also from the fluid when the fluid speed increase the head loss will increase as well so this head loss will increase so it will take from the head pump so that's why you can get some curve like this it's increasing until uh, set point so now for any pump we have some characteristic parameters that we um, determine the performance of the pump we have power we have efficiency and we have pump head so power we have electric power and we have mechanical power or what is known as uh, shaft power and we have hydraulic power so electric power is needed by the mechanical power or by the motor to rotate and this motor will rotate the pump and this pump make hydraulic power for the fluid so now the mechanical or the shaft power so PS is a shaft power equal torque times rotating speed or angular speed and as you know from physics torque equal force times radius so and times uh, speed and also from uh, physics you know that force equal m times a or m dot times v so force will be m dot v the mass flow rate of fluid times v times r times omega so now again you know linear speed equal angular speed times radius so now mass flow rate times omega speed times rho r times r times omega again so finally and as you know m equal rho times q so the final equation will be rho q omega, omega squared and r squared and this for the shaft power or mechanical power for the hydraulic power from the definition hydraulic power so it's a power required uh, by the pump to reach certain level so power definition of power is what is the energy overall time energy per time and energy is equal to force times distance over time so energy is force times distance and we have a time so we can say power like hydraulic power is the force required by pump to reach this fluid until certain level over time and force since the pump drive the uh, fluid to vertical distance or even uh, even uh, horizontal but we'll focus on vertical so the acceleration here will be g so f as you know f equal m a or m g so m g and the distance here will be the pump head the elevation i want to push the fluid to it so mg times hb over time so m over t will be uh, m dot mass flow rate times g times hg and again uh, m flow rate equal rho g times g times hb so this is the hydraulic power now efficiency now we said power electric power and electric power uh, drive energy to uh, power to mechanical power and then to hydraulic power so the efficiency of pump is the actual this is the actual power that the pump drive over the mechanical power that it received from the motor so it tells me it tells me the amount of the efficiency of my pump so the pump is hydraulic power over shaft power so just if we write this equation together okay so we can uh, rho q omega uh, squared r squared over uh, rho q g hb so 
this will be cancelled. Finally, we can get efficiency equal omega squared r squared g h b. Okay, so it's almost similar to this equation. Okay, now, so then we can define the pump head. Okay, this efficiency, so we can define the pump head from this equation. So the pump head equal to uh, efficiency times omega squared times r squared ta over g. So that means when I have ampular, when the speed of the ampular increase, the pump head, the produced pump head from the pump will increase. And when the radius also increase, so the same, the head, pump head will increase as well. And the efficiency is the efficiency of the pump and the efficiency is increase as the fluid increase and then due to the fraction, so it decreases again. The point, so this is the actual pump curve and this is the efficiency curve. The point that cut or intersect between the pump curve and efficiency, the peak of the efficiency curve, it's called best efficiency point, BAP, best efficiency point. Okay, so now we covered pump head, efficiency and power. Now we can put two pumps together. We can put two pumps in parallel, parallel, or in series. In parallel, that means we have a source of water and we connect par in parallel, pump in parallel. So each one has its own inlet and together they have one outlet. While in series, so I have one source, okay, and the outlet of the first pump is connected to second pump and we have one outlet, okay. So what's the difference or what application I can use first one or second one? Now, we said when, if I have a, like a curve, this is bump curve, okay? So this is a bump curve. So HP and Q. Now, suppose that you want to have higher HP and higher Q. So if you want more head and more quantity. So you have to get higher speed new bump with uh, uh, impeller, larger impeller or higher speed to have like this. Okay, so when you have larger pump with larger impeller or larger speed, you have a new curve like this. But suppose that you don't want both HP, L head and Q together. You, you need only one. You need only to have higher Q or higher head. So it's better to, instead of to, uh, to cancel your own bump and to purchase new bigger bump, you can purchase new bump and make configuration, put two pumps together, so put as a parallel or as in series. So according to your application, if you want more quantity, water quantity or fluid quantity only and you, doesn't care about, uh, you don't care about the uh, head, so you can put them on parallel. But if, if you're interested more in head, pump head, and you don't care about the quantity, so you can put them in series. So now, this is the setup. We have M1 and M2. So its bump has its own M. And as you know, so uh, M1 and M, the M total will be M1 plus M2. Why? Here's the normal pressure, normal pressure. So HP will not change. So now we, our curve, characteristic curve will be like this. So this is for single bump and we, when we put two pumps together in parallel, we have increase in the Q while HP pump head is almost the same. But if we put two pumps in series like this, so the first pump there is increase in the head. Then the second bump will take the first head 
as inlet, so the head will be increased. So the total head will be first head plus the second head. Why? Because as you know, the water flow rate or the mass flow rate is conservative quantity. So M will be the same because it's the same. We don't have two inputs. We have only one inlet. So here M or Q will be the same while pump when put in series there increase in the pump head. Now, you, we finished all things related to the pump, but we still now to configure the pump. So suppose if you have a system, okay, you have a system, and system you want to adjust the pump to the system. Suppose this system, okay, you have two tanks, uh, two different sources, and you have pipe and some fittings, valves or uh, bends, and you want to purchase pump that drives the fluid from one until two. So which pump you should purchase or you should get to have water from point one to point two? So this is called system, you want to have system curve. So now you have uh, this pipe, pipe again, fittings, pipe again, fittings, fittings, and this it. And you have static head, Z1 and Z2. So let's apply Bernoulli equation again. P1, this one, point 0.1 and point 0.2. So P1 over rho G plus V squared 1 over 2G plus Z1 minus HL, this is for fraction, plus HP. Now we add HP. It, was, it wasn't there, but it was here because the system here include external force. So I have included as well in the, system, in the energy balance equation. So plus HP. So why HL is minus? Because it's loss. And why bump is positive? Because it's external addition to my energy. Equal P2 minus uh, over rho G plus V squared 2 over 2G plus Z2. So now this point 0.1 and point 0.2. Now, atmospheric pressure and atmospheric pressure or, or, or suppose post pressure are the same, so we ca can cancel P1 and P2. And if the solution is a storage tank, so they are static, so the kinetic energy is zero. Or the same, if also the same is moving but the same, so it also will be cancelled. So now, this is the pump in the system should be equal Z2 minus Z1, Z2 minus Z1 plus, H, plus HL, the head loss. So that means the required pump to be installed in this system should the, uh, the height, so this height, the difference in height, Z1 and Z2, Z2 minus Z1, plus all loss in the system, all loss in the system. So HL include all types of loss. Uh, for example, uh, pipes, friction due to the pipes, or fittings, pump, uh, uh, fittings and valves, and valves, so all types of fitting. As you know, HL equal KF times V squared over 2G, and KF is a loss coefficient, and for valves, it's equal KF, and we can, uh, in terms of, if you have pipe, it will be equal to 4F L over D. If you are using, this is fa a, fa a friction factor, this is friction factor. So if you are using fanning friction factor, so it will be 4L over D. If you are using Darcy friction factor, so it F over LD. Uh, what is the difference between Fanning and Darcy? It's according to Moody's chart. So if you have Moody's chart like this, okay, if the Reynolds number is 16 over Reynolds number, this is friction factor and this is Reynolds number, so this one is Fanning friction factor. But if uh, your Moody's chart is 60, 64 over Reynolds number, so that means your Moody's chart is Darcy. Uh, this is most common and most used by mechanical engineer and civil engineer, while funding is most used by um, chemical engineer. So, okay. Now, okay. So now, as you know, V 
V equal Q over A. So the pipe is circular, so the cross section is uh, by d squared over 4. So we can A is equal by d squared over 4. So we can write all this part as 16, because we make it squared. 16 Q squared over 2 by squared uh, D to the power 4 G. So 16 over 2 will be 8 by squared and here we have Q squared D power 4 G. So now this for all types of fitting. So if we have a pipe we we'll apply this. If we have fitting and valves we we'll apply this. So in order to make one equation to uh, can help for all types of uh, fittings. So now since for HP equal Z2 minus Z1, this is a static static head plus 8 Q by squared G times all summation of KF over D uh, power 4. So KF here for for each one, each type of fitting, uh, depends on your fitting. So uh, you can say 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 fittings. And D part 4 for all types of fittings as well, for the diameter of the fitting. Now, when you, as, uh, as you, it says quadrupolic, quadrupola, uh, HP and Q, so you will have your system curve like this. So if you have HP, and Q. This is called system curve. So when you draw your system curve and you already know your requirement, you know your requirement for head and for Q. So you can compare the system curve with the available pump curve. This pump curve mostly provides from the manufacturer so each pump curve, when you purchase new pump curve, you have uh, like a certificate and a pump characteristic curve. So you can compare. Suppose that I have two pump curves, I have two curves, two pumps, and I want to compare. So the first pump, the curve like this. The second pump, the curve like this. Now, suppose that I want, I want to have head 16 meter. So suppose this is 16 meter. Okay? And the flow rate is, uh, suppose it's 40, for example. Okay. So now the first pump, uh, this the intersection between the system curve and pump curve is called operating, operating, operating points. So this is the operating point, the first pump, and this is the operating point for the second pump. So that means the first pump will give me this Q and this head. And the second pump will give me this Q and this head. Now, the first pump doesn't help my Q and doesn't help my head for, for the first pump. For the second pump, okay, the Q is fine. The Q is fine because it's more than my required but still the head is not fine. So you have a lot of solutions, scenarios you can apply to, to fix this uh, situation. You can either add, increase the head by add uh, another pump as in series, or you can play with the system curve. How to play with system curve? Now, if I make this system curve, if I make it like this, for example, Okay, so now the I can the cut will be meet my head. So this is modified system curve. So how, this is system curve represent all fittings here. So I, of course, I can't increase the height. I can't change the um, the elevation, but you can control it if you have a lot of valves here. Valve one, valve two, valve three. If you close the valve a little bit. Okay, so if you have more fittings, that means you can have more K. Okay, so the K will increase and the slope will increase as well. So it can help in this. 
Of course, it will decrease a uh, uh, Q a little bit. Okay, but it's still within my range uh, that I, I want. Okay, so now in the experiment, we'll try to find all these things power, efficiency, and pump head. We will build our pump curve. So, how to build this pump curve? You need head and you need Q. In in our system, in our experiment, we have calculated the pump head from this uh, equation, P1 minus P2 minus P1 over rho g. So we have a sensor, we have a pump, and this pump we have two sensors. Okay, so sensor P, this sensor measures the P2 and this sensor P1. So P2 minus P1 over rho g will tell me the pump curve. Uh, the power, hydraulic power, you will calculate. The shaft power is already given. Where is the shaft power? Oh, this shaft power is already given. You will see it. And you can calculate the efficiency. Okay. So, and then we will operate in parallel and in series. And you have to build post curves. And then you will be provided by a scenario of uh, um, system curve. And you start do your system curve. Uh, and find the best uh, operating point for post and find the best efficiency point for the uh, characteristic curve. So this is all about today's experiment and now we'll show the experiment how to work and the system setup and the procedure. Thank you. So now the experiment. This we have the uh, pump, centrifugal pump. As you can see we have two pumps and inside we have the uh, impeller. Now, we, this is the first pump, and it's the default pump. Take the water from the tank, okay? The water, the pump will push the water up, okay? And the flow rate is measured by this sensor, and it's go down to the tank again. I can control the amount of the water flowing through the pump by increasing or decreasing the pump. So if you open, now it's totally open. Now I'm closing it, so it will be closed until zero, okay? And we have uh, pressure sensors before and after. So we have before this sensor and after, okay? And I can, I can control the speed of this pump. We have also second pump. We will, will use it to, for parallel and for series. And this is fixed speed. We can't change it, but it's fixed speed. So in order to, if I want to uh, make my system in series. So in series means the first pump, the water is taken from the first pump, okay, here, exit, then I have to connect it to second pump. So now the valve here is closed, so I will make it open this way. So that means the water will not continue up. It just will be forced to go for the second pump. Second pump will uh, push the water to from here until it go for the tank again and it's measured flow rate and the valve. So this setup will be for two pumps in series. If I want to make two pumps in parallel, so now I have to open this valve. That means this, uh, this pipe by default and this pipe push together will drive fluid into the pump. So pump one and pump two, pump two, both will receive a water. And both of them push water to the system. So again, I have to make it open. So this pump will drive the water, and this pump will drive the water again. Both will meet here, and then both water will measured by the uh, orifice flow meter and then it go again to the tank. I can increase and decrease the pump, uh, uh, the valve to, to, uh, to check the pressure. I have here pressure one, two, and three. So this is to pressure the, the differential point between pump one uh, before and after pump one, and this is after pump, pump two. So this is my uh, experimental setup. Now we'll go for the screen, how it works. Now, this is single. This is my uh, window. So this is single. I can't change the operation from here, from view. View, single, okay. Or I can make it parallel, 
okay or I can make it series series so as you can see here in case of in series or parallel we can only control the speed of the first pump the f second pump just run we we don't have option to increase and the pressure is red here so this is the pressure before P1 after P2 and for the second pump after is P3 here also there is efficiency okay hydraulic and this is the pump uh, this is what is the uh, uh, mechanical our shaft or shaft power so this is shaft power so shaft power is given in what okay uh, this is already it will be calculated but you should calculate it by yourself and compare your result with what uh, is here and also the efficiency you should calculate it as well pump speed we can control the pump speed from here okay so now let's start with the first view with the uh, standalone pump or single operation pump okay now the second pump disappear check that this one is closed so this one should be closed and this one should be like this so we have follow the same shape okay now we can set our speed for example 1000 liter per minute uh, um, round per minute so it's uh, angular speed then you can set now the pump start okay the fluid go here measured and go so here we have the amount of it's already closed that's why you see it's zero but once you open it now it's flowing so you can read the data okay now you can take the pressure one before and pressure two and pressure two minus pressure one overall rho g you can find the pump head here the hydraulic pump is calculated and efficiency is calculated but you should calculate it by yourself and here we have the pump speed and this is the actual pump speed okay so what we should do we should uh, we want to plot q or uh, hp the pump head against q so every time we'll change the flow rate and take new pressure p2 and p1 and then change the flow rate again until we see this change and then take new p2 and p1 and that's it until we have a lot of data to draw or to plot my calibration curve now we finish the first part okay so stop let's go for the second setup for parallel now parallel parallel this one should be opened so we should open this one okay now this one should be closed it's already closed that's fine now we should switch on both pumps so now make run the now it's set okay and make run so now the second bump increase if you compared in the same flow rate between single and between parallel you'll find that the flow rate is almost doubled so here you take the uh, pressure one pressure two and pressure three as well okay so the same uh, same way will change the flow rate every time and take the flow rate and take the pressure and also you have to take the what the um, mechanical mechanical power in order to calculate the uh, pump efficiency so this is for parallel operation for pump in series so we have to stop stop this one as well then go for series operation now this valve is closed so I have to close it this one should be opened like this 
Okay. Now, again, run the pump. Set. Okay. So we'll repeat the same steps again. Same step for repeat it and change the flow rate. Take the flow rate reading and take the uh, pressure for the before and after the pump. So as you can see, it's very easy equipment and you can just take the data, you set the operation. You can also test any, a lot of things. You can test the, even the effect of speed if you want to speed or to change the speed and to study the effect of speed. So uh, this is all about experiment of the pump and I, I hope you found it easy and useful and thank you so much.